Hello everyone, welcome to From the Star Wars Home Video Library. I'm your host, Nathan D. Butler, and maybe I should rewind that and say that differently. Um, hello everyone, welcome to episode number 100 of From the Star Wars Home Video Library. Woohoo! We made it! Although honestly, I wasn't planning on doing anything special for episode number 100. Because when I look at the playlist, you know, I've done those supplemental episodes, I've done those little Clone Wars cuts episodes, so I look at it as like, ah, we're in like the 130, 135-ish, somewhere in between those. 100, that's not special, but then quite a few people, way more than I thought, kept asking me, so what are you going to be doing for episode number 100? It better be special. I wonder, it's going to be cool, what the heck are you going to do? And I'm like, oh, shit, I actually probably should be doing something for episode number 100. Hmm. So, uh, one thing that it did was it turned my segment, once these finally arrived in the mail, turned my segment on those THX uh, DVDs into episode number 98.1 to build off of that laser disc because I realized, oh, that's probably not cool enough for episode number 100. People will be disappointed. So, make sure to slide that in. It makes sense. It fits with the laser disc. It can be a supplemental episode. But I'm sitting there thinking, I don't know what to cover. I could wait until Rogue One comes out, but I have no idea when that's coming. Uh, they haven't announced it yet. Probably end of March sometime or sometime in April, but we don't know. Then I'm thinking, oh, well, you know, it could be about the book. I get the book done. That could be what the episode's about. But no, that's way too self-promotional. And who knows when that's going to be done. At this point, the book is about 260, 270 pages-ish. It's got about 300 pictures in it. It's pretty much done and ready to go. I'm working on the cover stuff now, uh, except I don't know if I want to include Rogue One or not, because I don't know when it's going to come out. I don't want to put it out and then have Rogue One come out and immediately make it out of date, but at the same time, I don't want to wait if Rogue One's going to take into, like, April or May to finally come out. They need to announce something. So, kind of in that weird zone there, so that wouldn't make sense for an episode number 100. And then it happened. One of those chants things. You may recall that back whenever I wound up being able to pick up the entire UK run of Ewoks on VHS, it was simply because I was sitting there reading a book that I contributed to, and I wanted to read the other contributors' essays in it, and I ran across one that was about Ewoks and droids, and on a lark, I hopped onto eBay and did a search for Ewoks VHS UK. Never thought I'd find anything. Holy crap, the entire series run was up there by somebody. I uh, even had great heat from droids lumped into that same auction, snatched it up. All of a sudden, one of my collecting Holy Grails found its way into my collection. Uh, droids is still one of my other collecting Holy Grails, but I haven't been able to find the three volumes of that beyond Great Heap. Not that I've really been looking all that frequently. But I thought, boy, wouldn't it be cool to just go on a search and maybe I'll find something odd that I could just use for episode number 100. At least something weird. Maybe not spectacular, but maybe something weird. Uh, never would I have expected that I would have found one of my other Star Wars collecting Holy Grails through a random search on eBay on a lark that I could then use as the subject of episode number 100. So, uh, for those who have been wondering what this thing looked like, uh, hold on to your butts. It's relatively rare. Uh, it's not going to be something that's super spectacular, I don't think. Um... But it's something that's so hard to find that I never thought I could add it to my collection because usually they, they are people are trying to sell it for so for a ton of money. I'm not saying that it sold for a ton of money, but people try to sell it for a ton of money. Um, and it just wasn't something I expected to be able to put into my collection anytime soon, if ever. And sure enough, I was able to find it. So let's rewind back to relatively early in this series. And we talked about how my collection began in the first place, and we looked at the early Star Wars releases of the films, and fairly early on, within that first, oh, 10, 20 episodes, give or take, we took a look at the very first boxed sets for the original trilogy, including a box set that was one of two that I purchased back around about 1993-ish, that wound up, unbeknownst to me at the time, forming the starting point of my Star Wars home video collection. The one that I bought in 93 was from 1992. I had got that large, you know, special Letterbox Collector's Edition set in 92 through the Lucasfilm Company store. But when it came to just the regular box set bricks of full screen copies, this is the one that I picked up at the time. 
is this. Box sets are the classic box set. The box set before the THX remastering was done uh, in 93 and then released on VHS in 95. But you can tell this is the one from 92, which is the beat-up one that I have since 1993 when I bought it, because it says up there at the top, Fox Video. You can also tell a difference if you open it up, which we'll do momentarily. But we've seen this. Alongside that, a lot of times on eBay, you will find something that looks very, very similar that's actually its precursor. The very first Star Wars boxed set ever released on VHS, in fact, ever released on any format, was this one. Looks pretty much similar. This one's from 1990. And you'll notice there you can tell because it says CBS Fox instead of Fox Video. When you open them, you'll see the little flaps with text. One way you can tell the difference is that one of them has the text in white, the other has it in silver. But it's actually the cases that are the easiest differences to spot here. So we're going to pull out a new hope from each one. The fronts, exactly the same. So no way to tell. The tops... One of them has character pictures. That's the 1991. The sides, character picture, again, versus not. And, of course, CBS Fox Video and Fox Video. The backs are significantly different in terms of their layout. This one is 92. This one is 1990. We spent some time with these two sets. And then relatively recently, when revisiting the early VHS releases, we talked about how before either of these, from 1990 or 1992, you had individual releases of the films. The most recent of those at the time were these three. We have A New Hope. Okay, now, A New Hope was released in 1984 before they did the remastered audio, and it said Hi-Fi Stereo, but did not say Digitally Mastered. Then in 1986... Remastered audio from 85 got put onto the VHS, restoring C-3PO's tractor beam line, among other things. And we had this in 86, which has a trilogy trailer at the end of the tape. And this was reissued around 1987, which was the exact same version of the film and all, except they moved the trilogy trailer to the beginning of the tape. But these are the ones that say, Hi-Fi Stereo Digitally Mastered in the red triangle in the corner, for A New Hope, at least. Similarly... We have The Empire Strikes Back, released in 1984 with Hi-Fi Stereo Digitally Mastered. There isn't one that doesn't say Digitally Mastered, which is also reissued then in 1986 with a trailer after it, and then around 1987-ish with a trailer before it. And in 1986, we saw the initial release of Return of the Jedi. There wasn't one without a trilogy trailer on it. It's got the trilogy trailer at the end in 86, released again around 87 with a trilogy trailer at the beginning. And these only have ever said... Hi-Fi Stereo, no digitally mastered, listed on the cover there. And, of course, they moved the triangle. But this, and this, and this, these were your ways of seeing the original trilogy. There were no boxed sets prior to 1990. Not in a box, at least. There were sets, but not in a box. Wait, what? What are you talking about? I mentioned it at the time. There was a trilogy set that was released in 1988. It was advertised as, We've tripled the force! CBS Fox Video presents all three fabulous Star Wars adventures in one fabulous collection. Yes, they say fabulous twice. At one fabulous low price. Holy shit, they said it three times. Purchase all three, or individually. Star Wars Trilogy comes to a video galaxy near you on September 1st from CBS Fox Video just happens to be that somebody has the poster uh, advertising that particular release up on eBay right now, so I could actually pull up the poster itself and tell you what the advertising said. But they took these, and they just sold them together as a pack. They didn't put them in any kind of box. They just put a little paper wrap around it and sold it as the Star Wars Trilogy. The problem with that is it makes it a real pain in the butt to find that these days, because... Well, on the one hand, most people, when they opened it, would have thrown away the shrink wrap and thrown away the little paper wraparound and such as part of just the packaging and kept just the tapes. So there are probably tons of people who are selling these tapes on eBay and elsewhere who had that 1988 set, but they didn't have the little wraparound and stuff, so there's no way to say this was the 1988 bound-together set. This is just the three cassettes, which you could have bought individually, too. 
Well, the other option would be, hey, maybe somebody still has it in shrink wrap. But if you've still got that thing in shrink wrap, they tend to go for ridiculous prices. There was a person, and oddly enough, the listing is down today, which is surprising because it had been up for months. Maybe somebody has bought it. But there was someone selling that bound together version of these still in shrink wrap, which means it still had its original wrap and everything on it, uh, for about $1,300 or $1,300 if you like commas in your numbers there. But holy crap, hell no. $1,300, even as rare as it is to see that together, even as rare as it is to see it still in shrink wrap, oh God, no, that's a ridiculous price tag. I got lucky. I was doing a search on eBay. I simply did a search for Star Wars VHS 1988. And sure, a bunch of listings came up that were wrong. Because the 1990 and 92 sets call it Star Wars Trilogy. And Star Wars Trilogy, but not with that exact logo, was what they called that bound together set. If you look at the copyright on the bottom of a 1990 set, the first copyright date you see will be 1988. Not because this set was from 1988, but because the term Star Wars Trilogy for all three films when they're being sold originated in 1988. you got to keep looking, and then you'll see the 1990, or on the other set, 1992. So I ran through a bunch of these that I'm like, oh, says 98, not actually 98. Dang it, do your homework. Dang it, look further along inside your info. And I ran to that guy who was selling the 1988 set, bound together, still in shrink wrap, for $1,300. I laughed, and I moved on. And then I came across an auction I didn't expect to ever see. Someone who was selling this set from 1988, all three tapes, with the paper binding, with the little insert card, advertisement card that was in it, just outside of shrink wrap. Opened, but complete. Something you almost never see because people usually just threw the little card and threw the little paper wrap away, never thinking of it as a collector's item. This person had kept them in great shape and was selling them all at once. I was lucky. I was able to get it for a little over 10% of what that asshat was asking for who was trying to get $1,300 out of a similar set still in shrink wrap. That's what I want to finally be able to show you today, something I never thought I would add to my collection, the 1988 set, but not boxed set, just bound set of the original trilogy. That set is this. Notice it says Star Wars Trilogy, but it is not the same logo style as in 1990 or 92, but it was enough to cause there to have to be a copyright notice for that terminology, dated 1988, on the 1990 set, which, again, confuses people. Nothing really there at the bottom. Okay, it's just that piece there. I'm going to go ahead and slip this off so I can show you the wraparound more easily, but it literally is just all three tapes slipped into a piece of cardboard here. Let me take that off and show you here. So you got that side there that's got your legalese copyright stuff down at the bottom, right? 1988 and so forth. Other side, similar but no copyright info at the bottom. Then you've got your side, your spine, Star Wars. Still wasn't being called A New Hope at that point even though it was the subtitle was on the film but people didn't call it that when buying it. Empire Strikes Back, Return of the Jedi, and then your catalog number, for those who are curious, is catalog number 1680-1680. Okay. Nothing on the inside, but this is how they were bound together. When people talk about a 1988 boxed set, they're either full of crap and talking about the 1990 box and have misread the copyright, or they're talking about this and not realizing there is no box. It's bound in a little paper ring thing. Then you've got the films themselves, and again, these are the same things as back at the same time as individual releases. Nothing different about them at all. In fact, unlike some of the later releases, when you really start getting down to nitty-gritty and you're starting to look like product numbers and such, even the product numbers like 1478 for Return of the Jedi are still the same thing on these packages. It's literally just the individual ones that were released stuck together into a single package, single set of shrink wrap with a little thing bound around it. Now there is also a little insert. I just slip it inside the A New Hope case so it doesn't get destroyed. 
little interesting insert here. It says Star Wars Trilogy. And as your text there. It says, May the Force be with you, always. We congratulate you on your selection of one of the greatest science fiction adventures ever. Now you can collect the entire Star Wars trilogy at the lowest prices our galaxy has ever seen. I don't know, there's just something about the phrasing, like, you know, it's coming to a video galaxy near you. Whatever. Just stop by your planet's nearest video store for these Star Wars titles. Or, excuse me, these other Star Wars titles. It shows Star Wars The Empire Strikes Back, Return of the Jedi, Trilogy 3 Pack, and it gives the little names there, the little product numbers there. Which is funny because it's basically saying, hey, you just bought all three of them as a three pack. Go out and buy the three pack again and buy them all individually. Whee! You're like, the hell? But whatever. Advertising, you know, typical stuff. Legally is down there at the bottom underneath the CBS Fox video logo. And then I actually think the back is the coolest part of this thing. So you look at the back, two sections there, it's hard to see, but the first section says, Join the Lucasfilm Fan Club, which I did around that time, uh, or at least in the 80s, uh, around the time Return of the Jedi was the most recent Star Wars film. By popular demand, Lucasfilm has formed the official Lucasfilm Fan Club. Your inside track to the latest on upcoming Lucasfilm productions and continuing developments in the Star Wars saga, which, of course, aside from Ewoks and droids, was basically nothing until 97-ish. For more information, send this self-addressed stamped envelope to... And it gives you the address. Yes, the days of the S-A-S-E. Self-addressed stamped envelope. And then what's cool is underneath it, though, it says... Star Wars trivia questions, and gives you 12 Star Wars trivia questions. Let's try them out here, eh? Number one. When captured by Vader's Imperial cruiser, what does Princess Leia place in R2-D2's memory systems? The secret plans of the Death Star, of course. Right? Because of Rogue One and everything. Number two. Luke's Uncle Owen buys C-3PO because the droid knows what language. Bocce. Although that's actually something that, you know, the traditional layman fan may not have known. That's actually a pretty good question. Number three. According to Uncle Owen, what was Luke's father? Oh, I know, I know. Dead. Oh, you mean navigator on a spice freighter. That's, that's, that's what you mean. Sorry, sorry, but dead would have been a correct answer too, I think. Number four. What is described as, quote, a wretched hive of scum and villainy, and who do Luke and Obi-Wan encounter there? Uh, Washington, D.C., and... I would piss people off by naming administration officials right now. Uh, oh, they mean most Eisley, of course, and that's where they encounter Han Solo, Chewbacca, Boshek, and so on and so on. But they're looking for Han and Chewie, of course. Number five. When Leia refuses to reveal the location of the principal rebel base, what does Governor Tarkin do? Well... He threatens to blow up Alderaan. Now, this says, you know, he has them blow up Alderaan. But, I mean, really, he blows it up even after he thinks, kind of, that she's told them the truth, right, about whole, you know, Dantooine. They're on Dantooine. And he's like, she can be reasonable and blow shit up anyway. Let's see. Uh, number six. To what star system must Luke travel to learn the ways of the Force? Like, wait. What? No, no. We're finally moving beyond the new hope. That, of course, is Dagobah. Okay. Uh, seven. What keeps malfunctioning on the fastest hunk of junk in the galaxy? Of course, that is the hyperdrive. Fastest hunk of junk in the galaxy being um, basically either the Millennium Falcon or back then a Pinto. Mom had a Pinto. Ooh, hated those cars. Uh, let's see. Number eight. Who tracks the Millennium Falcon to City in the Clouds? Okay, that's Boba Fett, but it's not saying the city in the clouds. They're calling Cloud City, City in the Clouds, with a capital I on N, capital T on V. Not sure if that's ever been its official name, but okay, whatever. Nine. After being captured by Darth Vader, what is Han encased in? Mm, dread. Nope, sorry, carbonite. Carbonite. Number ten. On which planet is the palace of Jabba the Hutt? Uh, Tatooine. Well, at least that palace, Tatooine. Number 11. What do the Ewoks think C-3PO is, and why can't C-3PO use their confusion to his advantage? Uh, they think he's some sort of god, but I like the back half of this, because it's another one someone else might be like, you know, if they're not a big Star Wars fan, I might be like, well, I honestly don't remember why, right? It's against his programming to impersonate a deity. Not a deity, a deity. You gotta say it the way that Anthony Daniels did. 
And then, it, yeah, for full credit, you got to say it the way the movie said it. Uh, that, that would make Star Wars trivia quite interesting, especially on some of the uh, the stranger phrasings. And then finally, number 12, who is the only pilot besides Luke and Han to survive all the major rebel-slash-imperial battles? Wedge. Though it doesn't say Wedge Antilles, it just says Wedge. Um, that's actually kind of cool. I mean, you've got a VHS set that's essentially a repackage of stuff that's already out there. And aside from this, in order to give it some extra value, they give us this little card, which is advertising on one side, fan club information on the other. But hey, it's got some Star Wars trivia on there, which, again, before the days of the Internet, before the days of super hardcore fandom online, uh, this type of thing would actually have been a really cool, nifty little trivia thing. Now someone would look at this and go, this is too easy for a Star Wars fan. Yeah, but, you know, it's not quite uh, meant for the extremists out there. It's meant basically for just a general audience who might have seen Star Wars and loved it enough in 1988 to have bought that set, that bound-together set of all three. So yes, finally, what I thought was probably impossible has happened. The 1988 set, but not boxed set, of the original trilogy has finally made it into my Star Wars home video library. I want to thank you for sticking with me for 100 regular episodes and about 130-something episodes overall, including the little timeline video and whatnot. I hope you're interested in checking out the book eventually when that's finally ready to go. Uh, we'll be back with more episodes as we have more releases from the Star Wars home video library. Thank you all for watching. May the Force. Who bet the home video viewers, especially those who stuck with this series since the beginning.